Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. This video here is a one day, $1,000 respray. So I'd actually just come back from a couple of weeks holidays in Thailand, come back on this Monday, and my business partner had uh, had this job lined up, ready to go. All I had to do was mask and paint, so great way to come back to Australia. Um, so the prep work had already been done. Uh, all the prime work was on there. Uh, basically the owner, um, he didn't want to spend any money, it's a S14 Silvia is what the car is. Um, he just wanted to sort of make a bit of his money back from the car. Um, and basically these days what we do is we um, work to people's budgets. So we just said to him, mate, what's your budget? And he said, I can't spend any more than a thousand dollars on it. And we say, alright, well this is what we can do. Like. We're not going to fix any of the dents on it, we're not going to fix any anything, it's just a, a quick check over, mask up and bomb some paint on there. Um, so look, all in all, it's it's tidied it up, but um, the car probably really did need either some decent sized repairs on the roof, and uh, there's a big one in the bonnet too, big dent. The, the sides aren't too bad, but... Um, yeah, if he had have thrown an extra 500 to 1,000 bucks at it, we would have made it look a lot nicer for him. Um, I think the, the owner of it, this young guy, he he had done the prep work. However, it did need um, re-going over again. So uh, my partner, he just ended up sanding it down with the orbital sander. Just a, just a quick 20-minute job, nothing nothing flash. But then took it in the booth. Um, yep, I just masked it up. And as you see, I started off with a wax and grease removing um, solvent, and that's called Prepsol over here. Um, and unfortunately, I thought I was recording on the very start of base coat, but for some reason, I must have uh, not pressed the button hard enough on my camera, and it wasn't recording for the, the first half of that uh, first coat of base coat. Um, not to worry, there's loads of footage of painting on this job. Um, it's probably up there with one of my longest videos, coming up to 34 minutes. So, um, hope you guys uh, stay around and watch right till the end. Um, so, what this is here, uh, to save a couple of bucks for this guy, we ended up finding some of our own paint. Um, and we were able to uh, mix a couple of these uh, blues and greens together and we were able to come up with a nice coloured ground coat, which is what you see me putting down here. It's very, very close to the exterior colour. I even said to Dan, I said, geez, mate, that's close, because I sprayed it out. I said, that's just about close enough to just paint that colour and not get some top coat colour, but we decided we would may as well just get one litre of the proper uh, colour from the colour code and um, mix that up and uh, just put that over the top of this. So, uh, it, it is the correct colour when it's all finished off. So, second coat here, you see me just smashing it on. I'm just going for uh, absolute coverage. So, the third coat is just a medium wet coat. It's going to be our set coat and our final coat. We still want a bit of coverage on that last coat. We're not going for a total dust coat or anything. Um, however, it's not, uh, it's not as heavy as this. Um, with dark colours like this, they're pretty forgiving. Um, if you're getting model, uh, if you're getting uneven uh, metallics on dark colours like this, then you really want to um, have a look at what you're doing um, because it's most likely a spray gun. I find a big uh, wide fan spray gun um, will usually get good results and just evenness. So I've found sometimes you can go on a little bit heavier, a little bit lighter, pretty forgiving with the good, um, good paints. Now, most of the time you guys see me doing resprays, you've probably noticed that I would prefer to sort of take bumper bars off, take those mirrors off, take the door handles out, but this guy just didn't want to spend the money, and, you know, I can't blame him. Like, he's probably bought this car, it's probably cost him a bit of money, doing his mods or whatever, and now he's like, well, I'm stuck with this car, I'm not really happy with it anymore. I want to try and make my money back, so I just thought I'll just put a quick thousand dollar coat of paint over it and maybe you can get rid of it that way or something. Um, recently you guys have probably most likely seen my own car that I've uh, given a respray. That was the little Toyota Echo. Get a lot of guys saying, oh why didn't you replace the panels, why didn't you do this, why didn't you PDR it, this, that and the other. And you know what, if it's my car, I can do what I want, that's why I look at it. 
and if I want to fill my car with bog, then I'm going to. A can of bog is $40, a four litre can of bog is around $40 here in Australia, so it's cheap and the rest was um, labour, you know. If this had been my car, yeah, I probably would have smashed some bog in that roof, a couple of bits of bog in that bonnet, there's a couple of decent sized ones there, and done probably a similar uh, similar thing to it, you know. It's not a show car, it's never gonna be, just a quick tidy out for the guy. Um, so I decided for the last coat of base coat here, I'd put you on um, first person view um, to give you guys a bit of a closer look at how I'm painting. Um, so just take note of where I'm starting and where I'm finishing. Um, I prefer to do this on a, a job like this. Don't forget that every job is different. Um, you know, if uh, if the roof was broken up into, um, if there was no, if the pillars say were not painted, you may um, do it slightly differently. But for this job, I decided this was the best way to do it. Start at one, start at one side on the pillar and then do the roof, come over, do the other side, run around from this quarter panel all the way around the entire driver's side, come around, do the boot lid, rear bumper bar. Now, the only spots we're going to have a little bit of dry patches are this quarter panel here, because we've started um, on the body of this quarter panel. So when you come around to do the boot lid and the bumper bar, you might get a little bit of dry spray over there. You know, and the other spots are going to be around that uh, A and C pillar, the windscreen pillars, um, and that's on the other side, because this side, because you've only just done it, you won't have any. Um, best way to fix that, I'll show you guys at the end, um, just put a bit of thinners in the gun and just puff it over the edge, just spray a bit of that over um, where it's dry and it'll just melt it in, no worries. You want to leave a little bit of your clear coat in there too. As far as base coat goes, it's not going to make any difference at all, there's no need to tack rag it. Um, and it's one of those things though, sometimes you can get better results if you do tack rag your base coat. Um, however, these days I've actually found getting actually less uh, stuff and less junk in the paint job if I don't tack rag the base coat. Um, but it's one thing that you just must monitor as a painter yourself. You've got to look at it, use your eyes and use your knowledge in the trade. You say, well that looks a little bit dusty there, I'm just going to quickly run the uh, tack cloth over it, a nice clean tack cloth. Um, don't use a dirty old one um, or else you'll end up dragging little bits of dust over it. Well, I said, a box of tack cloths is $15 for 10 so that works out to a dollar, dollar fifty each. Quite cheap when you're considering you're putting, you know, four or five hundred dollars if it's cheap paint on the reef spray. A tack cloth ain't really going to break the bank whereas three or four days worth of polishing um, on top compared to you know, an off-the-gun finish for a dollar fifty. Just grab a new tack cloth. So um, yeah, this is our uh, last coat of base. It's it's looking quite nice. You can see there is a slight colour difference. It's sort of got a bit more pearl in it, and it's just bringing it up that sort of nice vibrant green. Um, I actually don't mind this colour. I usually don't like greens on cars, um, but yeah, it actually looks quite nice. So the gun I'm using here is the Deville West GTI Pro with the T to air cap on it. This gun, I've had it for quite a while now, probably about five or six years, about 2009 I think I bought it. Um, it served me very well for quite a long time. As you can see there, it's got a real nice wide fan on it. Um, it atomizes the paint really nice and fine. And um, yeah, it just gets the paint on real nice. Uh, so the settings I use for base coat are going to be different for clear coat. So I'll have that uh, fluid needle where I'm right out, have the fan right open, which is pretty standard. I always like to have the fans on these Vilbus right open. And the pressure is going to be sort of between 20 and 25 psi. Today I think I had it about um, 20 psi. However, on the uh, colder months, that pressure is actually going to jump up to say 25 psi. Um, that is to do with the uh, the reaction that the heat has has with the air, so uh, higher density of air when it's colder. Um, now this guy here, you can see me sort of trying to get a bit of a, uh, extra green inside those edges. The guy sort of did it himself, and he ended up getting green uh, his primer overspray all through the door jams. He didn't mask it up properly, so you know what? I just didn't get too fussed with my masking, as you can see. I'm just like, well, it's not my overspray. Um, I'm just going to see if I can get my overspray to follow his in and sort of cover it up. 
Um, you may have noticed at the very start, um, there was a bit of green over spray up the top of the fenders and that was just because I decided to puff a bit of the uh, green over the top of his insides of his guards just to tidy up the engine bay a bit for him. And uh, yeah, we try to do what we can with um, people's budgets. So um, yeah, we've, uh, we've done a couple of restoration jobs here at this workshop too. Customers have been quite happy with it and um, yeah. I've got my own car lined up too, I've got a VL Commodore, which that'll be coming in whenever I get the chance. It seems that um, we've only been in this place since December and we're already getting um, quite busy quite quick. Uh, doesn't take long for, for the word to get out. If you do good work, it will um, speak for itself. Uh, I've got loads more videos planned in the future too. Um, videos on apprenticeships, what it's, you know, stuff like that, loads more gun reviews. I've actually started buying some new guns and that's solely for the purpose of this channel. Um, you know, some of the popular guns, the cheaper guns, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm a little bit reluctant to get one of those Sarda Jet uh, 5000s, just mainly for the price. They're $1,000. If it was sort of $500, I'd probably get one, but um, look, uh, I don't usually like to ask for money, but if you guys have got five bucks, ten bucks, whack it into fan funding. If you check my channel out, there's a tab called fan funding. You can um, donate any single dollar that goes there is going to go back into buying spray guns to review for you guys. So um, yeah, if we get enough money, we could sort of um, hopefully get one of those nice new starters and see what they're like. Um, I may even sort of look into doing some sort of uh, competitions with the Aldi guns once I've reviewed them. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> onto, me, onto our clear coat now. First coat of clear, I'll put you on the tripod. Second coat, again, I've got you up first person view. So again, um, just take note of where I'm starting and finishing. I've just come down those pillars, uh, just down the windscreen and the, um, the rear pillar there as well, the rear windscreen pillar. And um, yeah, that's that's only that's a small area. It's the only spot that's going to be a tiny little dry spray as well as this quarter panel. So I'm using the Pro Light with the TE20 air cap yet again. Another great gun. Um, this is still my favourite gun out after probably over a year. I've had other guns come and go and keep going back to this gun and getting the best results with it. Um, so on the warmer days, I find the pressure's gonna drop, so probably only around 20, 22 PSI, something like that. Um, and I actually like to wind the fluid out a little bit. So on a sort of colder day, I might even have it in as far as two and a half winds out for that fluid needle. So you wind it right in, and then there's a little um, uh, notch on the back of the knob and come out two and a half for a cold day. I've got it probably out four, even four and a half turns. But um, it's just one of those things that you just got to spray it on. You know the finish that you want to get. If it's looking like the kind of finish that you want to get, um, then just uh, go like that. If it's looking a little bit too dry, maybe wind the fluid out a little bit more and just, uh, just monitor it, I guess. And um, as far as getting different orange peels goes, this is a Japanese car, obviously. So um, I'm going to go and try and get a Japanese style finish on it. Um, no use in going getting that really thick orange peel of the European cars because it just won't look right. Um, I mean, I do find though when doing a respray, you, you can actually go that little bit further and get it to look a bit, little bit nicer than uh, if you're just doing just a couple of panels. You really want to concentrate on getting that orange peel to match the rest of the car. Whereas a full respray, you're starting from a blank canvas again. So as long as it's even the whole way around, then you should be pretty right. Um, the clear coat I'm using here is just some Duke's own 2K clear. It's just a cheap panel clear, however you can get pretty good results with it. Um, it's warranted over the Chromax base coat, which is what we use there. Um, Chromax is uh, exactly the same as DuPont, it's just been relabeled, so you guys will probably start seeing me use a bit more of that. I do have a Metalux system in my workshop, however, to be honest, I'm actually not that happy with it. Um, I just don't like it. it. It goes on okay, but I'm not too happy with the color matching system and the tinters. So hopefully we can get that Chromax system sorted out sooner rather than later because it is starting to slow us down. When we can get just some smaller jobs coming in and stuff like that, it, how it goes is um, 
if you go and order some pre-mixed colour from any paint shop, they're going to give you a minimum of 500 mils, even if we're just got to do one little tiny stone chip on the fender and blend some colour in. If we wanted to mix up 100 mils pre-mixed colour, they won't do it. So we really do need our own paint system at this workshop. Um, that metal like system I was telling you guys about, we came into this shop and basically everything we see, we got it at a really good price and it's a pretty cool shop. Um, but yeah, a lot of those tinters are actually sort of depleted. Um, it's going to cost us a couple of grand to get them all stocked back up to a usable system. We had it priced up. And we ended up finding that uh, Metal Lux actually isn't that cheap. It's no cheaper than we will be able to get the Chromax for because uh, the Chromax or the DuPont is uh, a binder system. So you can put the cheaper binder in there and you can actually make it so that you're going to save money that way. Um, I just like it. It's uh, It's got a better name than Metalux, I guess. Uh, everyone knows DuPont, um, worldwide, world-recognized name. If you're going to put that paint on the car, you you know, it's going to be good quality paint. You're going to expect that it's good quality paint. Um, I'll give you guys a bit of a run-through on my booth. Um, so, up the front of the booth, so the other end, the end, the the bonnet, and the front of the car is up. It's got a semi downdraft system in it, and up the end that I'm up now, it's got an extraction fan. Uh, so it's got filters for inlet, it's got dual filters for inlet, and it's got um, just one layer of these uh, different style filters for the um, outlet filter. Um, it works quite well. Originally, um, when I first got into this giant. I painted a roof on this Astra and I'm used to a spray booth that you can walk in and walk out and you will have positive pressure, not negative pressure. So that means that if you hold that, if you pull that door closed, you'll actually be having a little bit of pressure pushing the door open. Um, whereas with this one, we've got negative pressure. I open that door and it sucks everything in from outside of the workshop into the booth. It creates one hell of a um, storm of uh, just wind all the way through the spray booth there and it just gets dust all through there. So a couple of ways of getting better results in this spray booth wet the floor down and there is a uh, little switch on the entry and exit of this booth so I can actually turn that fan off if I do need to go out of the booth. Um, you guys may have noticed that I do have my paint mixing bench inside the booth. It actually has proved to be quite handy. First time I've ever actually worked at a place with a mixing booth, uh, mixing room inside the booth. Most of the time you would not want to do that, um, mainly because most booths are baking ovens. But this booth here, it's just a spray booth. It's got no temperature in there at all, no heat, uh, no baking. Uh, so. Yeah, um, it, it enables you to put the, the paint in the booth and mix in the booth, so there's no need to um, go out of the booth in between uh, paints and stuff like that. So, um, you guys may have noticed just on that first coat, uh, I wasn't quite happy with that boot lid, so I just decided to quickly smash another quick coat over it just to fill up. It ended up there was a few bits of dust landing in it, um, and I think it was most likely some of the overspray landing from the roof and falling into that boot lid. Um, so, or the trunk, as you may call it in the US. Um, and then by putting that extra coat of clear over it, it's going to build that clear up and actually hopefully try to bury some of those bits of dust that may have landed in there. And it turned out that it did work. Um, so as you can see now, your uh, first person view for this last coat of clear coat. This last coat of clear coat here, totally unedited. Um, one continuous piece of footage from start to finish. Um, haven't cut anything out, so mainly wanted to do this just to give you guys uh, a really good idea of how to put your second, how I put my second coat of clear on a respray anyway. Um, it is definitely my longest video, probably by about 10 minutes around there. Um, uh, I've done okay, I think, so far of uh, talking you guys through it. Hope I haven't bored you, uh, but if you're still watching, I guess you're still pretty interested in seeing how I do it. Um, as I always say, make sure to check me out on Facebook, uh, hit that sub button to be up to date with all my latest videos. These days I've been trying my best to keep to a schedule. I upload videos every Sunday and Thursday at 12, 
12 o'clock midday Perth time. So globally, that's obviously going to change. A couple of my uh, big viewer uh, bases are America. So East Coast, you're looking at about 11 o'clock Wednesday and Saturday night. Uh, and East Coast, sorry, West Coast, you're looking at about 8 o'clock Wednesday and Saturday night. So places like UK, I've got a lot of viewers over there. I think you guys are about 5 to 7 hours behind, actually. Yeah, about 7 hours behind. So you get it sort of 5 o'clock in the morning, um, Wednesday, sorry, Thursday and Sunday. Um, whereas we've also got places like Poland and even Russia, I've been getting a lot of views from over there. So you guys are about five hours behind, which is say seven o'clock in the morning, Thursday and Sunday. So you'll know when exactly when to watch out for the newest videos. Um, yeah, if you like the vids, make sure you whack some comments down. I always do my best to get back to you guys, but I can't guarantee everything, anything. Um, I sometimes answer the easy questions, to be honest, because if I have to sit down and write a three-page essay on how to set your gun up, I'm just not going to bother. I'd sooner make a video that thousands of people can watch. And, um, yeah, I'm very thankful to all my viewers and sub subscribers. I've got a very loyal fan base, um, people that love watching my videos, great comments, heaps of likes, and loads of views. So I've just recently got over a million views and that's in only just over one year so and don't forget this is just the first year so I'm learning myself as far as videos and I'm always thinking whenever I'm at work I'm constantly thinking what can I do that would make a cool video for you guys to uh, learn something out of and it's actually rekindled my love of spray painting I've always liked it um, I've always seen spray painting is more than just a job it's been a, a passion for me as well um, and doing these videos has just um, been able to share that love of the spray painting with the world um, it's just uh, yeah rekindled the, the love of this trade and I'll tell you what there's not much better than just getting a killer coat of clear on a bonnet I tell you what when you when you just smash a coat of clear on a bonnet like if you use like three or four hundred mils of clear up on a bonnet and you get it like dead flat, that's why I love this shit. Um, I just love making shit look good. I hate polishing, don't get me wrong, I think every spray painter hates polishing, so I try my best to get off the gun finishes. Um, I think that's mainly just because it's uh, it's just a pain in the ass, it's time consuming and you sometimes like get the whole car polished up and then you wash it and then you get it out in the sun and you're like, oh it's got swell marks or there's a bit of memory has come back from where you sanded it uh, back in, do it again. It's the job that when you're an apprentice, you just get given the polishing and yeah, I've always done my best just to get it off the gun. So as you see on this second coat, I'm just slowing right down and just smashing it on. I sometimes drop the pressure down just a touch, not much, but for the bonnets and flat panels, say bonnet roof boot lid or hood turret and trunk, uh, I'll drop that pressure down just a touch um, and it'll allow it to go on a little bit thicker, which is going to allow a little bit more flow, whereas on sides, uh, that's just going to equate to either a thicker orange peel or runs, so I like to get the pressure up that touch higher and hold it maybe even a little bit closer on the sides too and go a touch quicker whereas on the bonnet you want it to flow out and you want heaps of paint on there so yeah that's that's the way I try and get them nice and flat so uh, since making this video I ended up shortening that airline it was just a pain in the ass I was constant it was constantly tangling up and it was actually too long there's no need to have it uh, that long I probably cut a good three or four meters off it so ended up making a bit nicer in there to paint. Um, I've also uh, just got my finishing line gun recently, so I've got a um, uh, unboxing video, which is something new for me. Check that one out, and also got uh, a couple of reviews and demonstrations to come. That gun, the finishing line gun, it's not quite up to scratch with this Pro-Lite, put it that way. Um, it's made in Taiwan, whereas the GTI Pro Lite, which I may mention 
is actually the same gun as the Tecna Pro Light. One or two little differences, the Tecna Pros and Pro Lights are black and they don't have, if you see down just above that regulator of mine, there's actually a little air valve on the bottom of the spray gun itself um, and you can it, you can actually leave your regulator off and still uh, change your air pressure that, uh, with that little valve there. Um, it seems to me, because I bought that uh, finishing line gun from America as well, that one doesn't have it. Uh, it seems to me like it's just an American thing. Uh, they don't have the air valves on the gun themselves. Guys over there must just run regulators on their gun, every single gun. Which, to be honest, I run regulators on every single gun of mine anyway, so that valve just ends up sitting flat out anyway. So, to be honest, I wouldn't even need them. I could bung them out or could just do away with them and it wouldn't make any difference to my everyday spraying. Um, so just a bit of an idea of the paint usage and how much paint you're actually going to need to do a job like this. So we ended up using about 2 litres of the ground coat colour and then another 1 litre of the top coat colour. So that's before it was thinned out. So that thins out to another 50% on top of that. So you've got say 4.5 litres of uh, mixed and thinned base coat and about three liters of clear coat. Don't forget that um, you're putting an extra coat of base. Because it's solvent based, we ended up having to put three coats on. If you guys are using water base, you may be able to use, say, three liters of color, or maybe even less. Um, I'm not, I haven't used much water base. Um, I use a little bit of it at trade school. I do remember it taking a long time to dry. Some people say, oh, you have to put less coats on, but I wonder whether or not the longer it takes to dry would end up you know, making it take longer in the end. You know, you could have had that extra coat of uh, solvent base on by that time. Anyway, plus the solvent base is cheaper. So uh, at the end of the day, you know, we can't afford to go and put overly priced paint on, you know, this guy, perfect example, he wants to spend a thousand dollars, you know. We can't go and spend eight hundred dollars on paint to, to paint a guy's car for a thousand dollars, you know. We're not working for free. So um, it's just one of those things when the prices either come down or it, either that or it becomes regulation that we have to use the solvent base, which I think all of most of Europe, I think it's regulation that you do have to use water base. Um, but it's just one of those things. It's just going to see cars like this not get painted. Well, the job's about finished off now. Um, as I said before, I may sort of uh, start running out of stuff to say. I had a guy uh, make a comment the other day on another one of my long videos. He goes, mate, whack some music in if you ever run out of stuff to say. Um, I've been basically talking flat out for the last 30 minutes, so I'll put um, a bit of music on for the next two or three minutes. I'll then talk you guys through the very end of it when we're having a final look over it. Um, and make sure you hang around to the end too.
Okay, so as I promised you guys earlier, I'll just show you guys how I do my little uh, clear blends. So you notice here, I'm not tipping all of that clear out. I'm just leaving a little bit in. You've got to be careful also that rim, when you tip clear out, sometimes it can end up building up on the thread of your pot and um, end up turning into a gun drip if you're unlucky. So I'm always careful to wipe that rim once I've tipped a bit of paint out. And giving it just a bit of a shake up and just spraying that over that area and that's just going to melt that in because it's sort of 50 50 thinners and clear coat it's going to melt in and blend in real nice um look i didn't see this job worth using the proper blending thinner we did have some there not much which is if we had a full can yeah i would have just used it but and it also shows and big part of the reason also i just thought you know because i get guys asking about this and how to do it but that way you guys can see it's just 2k thinner straight out of the can you wouldn't want to use base coat thinner i mean you could if you had to but you know just use 2k thinner spray it over there and bob's your alcohol awesome um i'll give you guys a good look over the car here and if you hang around for a couple more minutes we've got a, a bit of a look at it when it's out the front and um ready for the owner to pick up we didn't do any polishing on this car there's a couple of bits of one mainly in the boot lid, there was one big bit of dust. I found down that end of the booth we get more. The, as I mentioned earlier, we've got the inlet fan of our booth sort of up this end of the booth. So I, I find cleaner up there. We end up getting little sort of whirlwinds coming up this end of the booth. The overspray sort of goes around in uh, circles uh, and then hits itself, dries, lands back in the paint sometimes. And it could, could also have sort of flown out from the, the roof area as well. So, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with it, you know, it's it's nice and shiny, and um, yeah, I think the owner was pretty happy with it, he was a little bit surprised at how bad the body was, I don't think he realised it was that bad, like, we were trying to get him, with, and he goes, oh, how much is it going to cost to do the roof properly, and we said, oh, two grand, you know, just for the roof, because it really would have, uh, to do it properly, you would have had to have picked that roof off and welded a new roof on, pulled the windscreens out, and uh, you know, pretty decent job. We've got to paint the insides and rust treat it and stuff like that. But um, he didn't want to go that route with this car. It wasn't worth it to him. So um, there you go. There's a look at the gun, the old GTI Pro Light with the TE20 on it. Totally awesome gun. The car looks pretty nice. Pretty nice looking car. These Sylvia's uh, S14 was the model. I'm pretty sure it's got a turbo in it too. It's RB25 or something like that. So 2.5 liter turbo. They go pretty nice, pretty popular and yeah, amongst the young dudes, drifts and drifters and stuff like that. Love these cars. So there you go. All in all, he's got definitely got a tidy up. Um, yeah, there's one hell of a big dent in that bonnet and a couple of big wolves in the roof. Apart from that, it's um, it's acceptable. Um, hang around here for another minute. There's another video which you guys may have already seen. Uh, most likely, if you're still watching, you're a pretty avid watcher and you love my vids so you probably have seen it already but there was a video I made on how to paint new panels and I did something different in it I sort of cloned myself that was just me having a bit of a fun with my editor and there's also another one here how to uh, make your own gun wash machine on the right there so thanks for watching and this has been another Gunman production goodbye